Recently, This is America and the World visited Malaysia. The country sits south of Thailand and north of Singapore and uniquely consists of two distinct land masses. The west part of the country is called Peninsula Malaysia and across the South China Sea is East Malaysia, located on the island of Borneo. Malaysia is a peaceful country and a success story. Its population of 30 million people is racially, ethnically, and religiously diverse. Perhaps not as well known in America as it could be and should be, Malaysia's international status cannot be denied. On this program, we'll travel the country of Malaysia together. Peninsula Malaysia in the west, across the South China Sea to East Malaysia on the island of Borneo. For anyone with an eye for nature, a heart for culture, and a taste for food, in Malaysia, the options for a tourist are limitless. This is America visits Malaysia. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S. China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. Tourism Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services. In the administrative capital of the country, Putrajaya, I met with the Secretary General of the Ministry of Tourism and Culture to learn about what Malaysia has to offer for anyone looking to explore its natural beauty, learn its history, delve into its culture, and enjoy the warmth and hospitality of its people. To know Malaysia is to love Malaysia, and uh, Malaysia welcomes the world. Ah. It's a peaceful country, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's, it's very peaceful. I mean, it's a stable. reputation internationally is yeah. as a peaceful country. Yeah, it certainly is a very peaceful uh, country. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, all of us you know, uh, live in unity and harmony. And it's, it's certainly a very peaceful country. Yeah. I understand that as a place for people to retire, yeah. fourth in the world, yeah. first in Asia, Yes. Why is it so attractive for people to come and live here in their retirement? Oh, I think there are a number of uh, key factors why Malaysia is an attractive place for retirement. Uh, first, I think if you look at the, the, uh, the cost of living, you know, oh. the cost of living is uh, relatively low. And with a low cost of living, you get value for money because we have modern amenities, good infrastructure, good medical uh, facilities, and uh, good entertainment you know, uh, opportunities. And Malaysia is also you know, where English is widely spoken, yes. mm -hmm. and there are many uh, you know, places you can uh, visit, and the people are friendly. So, so that is uh, some of the reasons, uh, major reasons why Malaysia is an attractive uh, destination for you know, retirement for people who uh, long stay, we call long stay visitors. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the diversity of the population and uh, how it affects the culture here. Um, diversity, uh, if you look at uh, Malaysia's uh, tourism tagline, no? Malaysia truly Asia. So that in itself reflects our unique selling point where we, uh, it's a country with uh, such a diverse you know, culture, religion and all of us living in harmony. And looking at that, for example, uh, the practices, the food, you know, like for example, uh, Malay food, we have uh, nasi lama, you know, uh, we have uh, Indian food, the nasi kanda, you know, uh, banana leaf rice, we have the Chinese cuisine, you know, you have the ethnic uh, food in Sabah, Sarawak. So in terms of uh, diversity is the, for example, you look at the food aspect 
And then you look at the important aspect is the way of life, the understanding, the respect you know, uh, of each other's uh, culture and religion, and living in harmony, you know, the understanding and the peace uh, and harmony. Mr. Secretary General, thank you, thank you so much thank for you. this education thank and you. your warm hospitality thank and that of your staff. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Malaysia is divided west and east by the South China Sea. Peninsula Malaysia on the west is a tourist paradise. Malacca is the historic home of the silk trade, culture and the arts. Georgetown is the UNESCO designated area of Penang and the modern capital city of KL, Kuala Lumpur, is filled with stunning architecture, crowded malls, lush green parks, and at rush hour, plenty of slow-moving traffic, but never the sound of a horn. I love your name, Ashmaliana. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Dennis. Welcome to Malacca. Thank you very yes. much. Malacca is the birthplace of Malaysia and it's a world heritage site, yeah, it's uh, a historic site. Tell me a little bit. Actually, uh, Malacca described as the world heritage city by UNESCO since 7 July 2008. Whoa, yes. so that draws a lot of people here, yeah, huh? Yeah, we are together with the Georgetown, Penang, because Malacca, we can say that um, the and Georgetown, also the best place how to look all the intangible and tangible cultures of Malaysia. So that's why we can, you can see in Malaysia, in Malacca itself, we can see all the cultures in Malaysia you can found in Malacca. Because Malaysia, as you know, we have the most, um, we have the Malay, Chinese and Indian community. And also for Malacca itself, we have uh, the Ch Chetis. So Chetis means we have the intermarriage between the Indian and Malay community. Whoa, so Indian Malay, Chinese Malay? Yes. Everybody is happy together? Yeah, <laughs> that's why we're living in harmony in Malacca. Wow. Yeah. They say that back in the 1300s, yes. Malacca was famous for uh, fishing and agriculture. Yeah. And then, of course, a very famous trading post. Yeah. yeah. How would you characterize Malacca today? Okay, for today, uh, we can say that uh, mostly Malacca we depends on our tourism sector. So it's about 46% of our GDP is uh, um, depends on our tourism. So that's why in Malacca we can say that uh, all the people in Malacca together in the tourism industry. Ah. Uh, we have the uh, the history, we have the culture, the recreation, all the agro-tourism, all about the shopping in Malacca. You can find all together in Malacca. Penang is a great tourist attraction all over Asia. Why is that so? Penang is famous for the heritage. For, uh, heritage. And Georgetown has been recognized by the UNESCO. Okay? You are now in the, in the uh, heritage area. So, I said, people come to Penang, not only for the food, the beaches, but the most important is the heritage. Heritage. Heritage, yes. I've heard about Harmony Street. It's a wonderful name unto itself, Harmony Street. Tell me, when we go there, what will we see? You, you will see the, the church, you will see the mosque, you will see even the temple, either Hinduism or Buddhism. Whoa. Never missed on that one. Wow. Then I say, Malaysia I say, is truly Asia. Everything here, the food and the religion here, all living under very peaceful and harmonious. People come here as tourists, but there's a lot of other things going on here. Uh, I see high-rise buildings, uh, people living here, people, I guess, retire here, and huge manufacturing as well, huh? What are some of the other things that go on in Penang other than tourism? Okay, other than tourism, see, uh, Penang I said, is uh, one of the industri industrial uh, states, industri industrial state. Okay, a lot of factory coming uh, here. A lot of uh, these uh, investor, okay, foreign investor, invest in, in Penang. Number two, like I can say uh, quite uh, a lot of these uh, foreigners. Uh, residing in Penang, 
under the program of Malaysia My Second Home, where uh, they can buy a property, okay, and stay here for 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 for, for a long period. I read some place in my research, fourth most popular place to retire in the world, number one in Asia. Is that true? I can say that. It is? I can say that. It is true. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so okay, much. Okay. This is the capital city, right? Exactly. Kuala Lumpur, they say KL. KL, huh? as K only known as huh? KL. So everybody says KL here, right? Yep. Pretty much so. What's the population of uh, Malaysia, total? The total population of Malaysia is 28 million. And that's east and west, exactly. right? Exactly. The two peninsulas. Exactly. Separated by the sea? By the sea. Yes. So what's the population here in KL? In KL itself is 1.8 million. 1.8 million. Exactly. And what happens here? It's the uh, business center of Malaysia. Actually, it's the focal point of Malaysia's industry and commerce. When uh, we were setting up our cameras to uh, shoot our conversation, many, many tourists here, huh? Exactly. Even on a day where it's a little gray, a little rainy, but I guess that's the way Malaysia is, huh? Yes, beyond any doubt, Kuala Lumpur is a city of contrast. First and foremost, it's a modern city. And yet, in the midst of the modern uh, uh, characteristics, there are still traditional elements, yeah? such as the modern uh, skyscrapers, the patronized twin towers, and also we have the majestic colonial Sultan Abdul Samad building, uh, which is about 130 years old. Uh, we have the modern architecture and also the British colonial uh, and also Moorish theme influence. Moorish, yes, yeah. Moorish theme. Yeah. In general, we balance and mix everything together uh, in a right way where everything is in harmony. One of the things that we have just experienced a little bit is the food here. Right. It's absolutely sensational, isn't it? And very inexpensive. Yes, it's very affordable and it's very tasteful. Mm -hmm. One must try, when they visit Kuala Lumpur, one must try teh tarik. It's actually uh, milk tea which they pull. Oh, uh, I heard about uh, that, yes. They pull the tea uh, with two cups just to create the uh, foam. Ah, ah, instead of just pouring. Uh, instead of just pouring normally. We have to experience that. Exactly. We should go shopping. Shopping? Because Kuala Lumpur is a shopping heaven. It's duty free. Is that right? Right. I hear that people come from Singapore just to shop. Exactly. <laughs> Not only Singapore, around the region. What would you say is at the heart of the Malaysian culture? I must say the spirit of Malaysia, boleh. Yeah. Malaysia boleh. What Mal is it? Malaysia can. A oh, Malaysia can? Yes. Bully. Boleh. Oh, uh, Malaysia can. That's the yeah, spirit. That's the spirit. A can-do spirit? Can-do spirit. You got it right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's, and we could go, uh, probably not dance in the rain, <laughs> but appreciate how beautiful it is here. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. East Malaysia on the island of Borneo is divided into the autonomous states of Sarawak and Sabah. Both states offer terrific natural beauty, mountains, marine parks, jungles, and rainforests. Also, unique histories and scores of groups of indigenous people. In Sarawak, we visited with the chief minister and then its cultural village. And in Sabah, we met with the minister of tourism. Tourism, big here. I understand maybe five million people visited last year. We have year? natural resources, caves, virgin jungle, lakes, rivers, all the wild places, flora and fauna. And they're all there. We attract naturalists, people who love nature. That is why I have recently, when I took office, I said no more, no more logging. No more exploitation of our forests for commercial purposes, except planted forests. Our national forests should be preserved. I've increased the number of our national parks and wildlife, uh, wildlife sanctuaries, including uh, havens for orangutan and all that. Mm -hmm. 
and I have stopped the, the increase the spread of plantations. Enough. We have enough plantations already, except for local native customary right plantation and other government projects. I will not allow for any more commercial plantation by companies from overseas or even locally. Mm. Might be, there must be a, mar a moratorium on that one. You know, some people, they look at a forest and they only look at the timber. They don't look the way the, the, the David Attenborough look at the forest. Mm. Appreciate it as it is. For all we know, they are millions of years old. Mm. 40, 40, 50 million years old. And it takes just two minutes to cut them down. Mm. So we, will, uh, we have put down, reduced the number of illegal logging in this uh, state. No more illegal logging. You have the power to do that? Yes, I'm the Minister of Forestry. Yes. And you, you can tell no more, no more, no more. No yes. more. We're not doing that. And anymore. I make sure the Forest Department and the uh, uh, Forest Corporation comply. We thank you very much for your visit with us, the education, the hospitality of your wife and yourself and your staff. You haven't finished the food yet. We are, this is open house, right? Uh, whatever it is, open house. Just <laughs> eat, go ahead and eat. <laughs> we thank you thank very you. much. All right, thank thank, thank you, you, Chief Minister. Thank, thank you. you. Cultural village. What happens in the cultural village? Uh, the Cultural Village is a living museum. It house um, seven major ethnic groups of Sarawak. Sarawak has more than 28 ethnic groups. And here we are 17 acres, so we could uh, exhibit and display and demonstrate the uh, lifestyle of the seven major ethnic groups in Sarawak. Ah, so yeah. as we wander the grounds, yes. What will we be seeing? As you wander the grounds, you will see ethnic houses. The carpentry is based on the traditional methods and techniques. The purpose is to preserve the olden days, the traditional ways of carpentry. That's what you will see on the grounds. And indoors, in those houses, which are replicas of the real uh, long houses or villages in the remote uh, areas of Sarawak, which is famously called the land of the hornbills, and also the tropical rainforest. Yes, it's a, so these uh, people who we employed are very proud to present their tradition, their customs and the way of life. And how about your own background? Uh, I'm an Iban people. Oh, those are the yes, biggest the group. Yes, huh? Yes, the Sidaya, the biggest group. Ah, and tell me a little bit about how you're dressed for the celebration Actually, uh, today. this one is uh, the uh, Orang Ulu costume. Uh-huh. Uh, so this one, we call it Gagong. Uh-huh. We actually, uh, in here, we met, uh, met it from uh, goat skin. Goat skin. Yes, and this one is, uh, we call it headgear, the Orang Ulu headgear. Uh -huh. So this one is shells. Oh, yes. This one is about this one. Ah. Yes. Oh, the sword, huh? Yeah, the sword. So, this one is dart. Oh, darts! We use can it I, from... Uh, can uh, I take out a dart? Yeah, sure. Huh? So, this one is, we uh, use it from uh, hunting animals. Oh, okay. Yeah, but for a long time ago, we use it uh, for to attack enemies. Woo! And then we put the poison here. Woo! And then uh, s uh, some of them, uh, they use it uh, from hunting animals to eat. Still now or just in the past? In the past. In the not past. Now. Not now. now you now. didn't use it now. Yeah, huh? because uh, now we have we have a money, right? Yeah. You can never, <laughs> if you want to get married, you can. You know, <laughs> and you have guns now too, yeah. <laughs> right? So thank you and have a good performance today. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's the carpentry, the modern replica of the actual traditional houses, to the uh, actual people who demonstrate their craft work and uh, such as bas basketry, uh, woven textile, blowpipe making, and others. And it will culminate in a finale with the cultural performance, which we have the dances of each of the uh, ethnic races of Sarawak, the music, the costumes, the songs, all featured in the 45-minute uh, 
cultural show. So that's what happened in the Sarawak cultural village. 65% ah. of Sabah will always remain forested and that's our overall policy. Wonderful. And yes, uh, we have decided that we want to dedicate the major part of our land to conservation. And we like to believe that this is our gift to the rest of the world. Mm. And You're the minister of not only tourism, but you keep your eye on the environment yes. as well, huh? Not exactly a very pleasant thing to do from time to time. You know, when you talk about development, you cannot uh, escape from talking about human greed. And managing the environment really is about managing human greed. And that's a very tough one to do. Ooh. And that is permeating the world. Huh? Yes, yes. You see, you know, probably we have learned a bit from others, those who have sacrificed the jungle for so-called development. And we realize that really, we can actually go in hand with development and environment. In fact, it brought us more income by conserving our forest rather than in cutting them. The word Sabah, yes. does that mean some? Does it have a historic significance? Well, it's an old name of North Borneo. And uh, we reclaim back the, la the, uh, the name after we got our independence in 1963. So we are on the island of Borneo. Yes, we are on the northern tip of Borneo. You know, in, uh, the Borneo island is, of course, as you probably know, is the uh, third largest island in the world. It is uh, Partly it belongs to Indonesia, the Kalimantan, and then there's a Brunei, and the state of Sarawak, and Sabah is in the northern tip of Borneo. Mm -hmm. How many tourists come to Sabah each year? Do you have any idea? Well, yes, we are talking about nearly 3.5 million tourists, which is about the equivalent of our population anyway. So if someone comes to this wonderful hotel and spends a few days, what will they do as far as day trips? You see, we are really blessed. I mean, the island is just 20 minutes away. The mountain, which is one of the highest in uh, Southeast Asia, is just about one and a half hour away. I mean, they are small for choice. Island or mountain? Island or mountain. You want to uh, sunbath or you want to enjoy the uh, chilling or rather the cooling effect of the mountain. Uh -huh. You can get both. In this area, you mentioned a population of about 3 million people. Yes, about 3.2. The This has been rapid growth, hasn't it? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, there are two reasons, I believe. One one is we are very pro productive people, I believe. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the other one is because over the years, we have had quite a number of immigrants who, who from the Philippines and even from Indonesia who have come over here. And basically, some of them are, of course, were beyond our control. There were problems in the southern Philippines. And for the uh, Indonesians, we need, lab, lab, I mean, we, need, we need to open up land for cultivation. We, and we need labor because we don't have enough people to work. Ah, and so it's a combination of some from Indonesia, some, some from the Philippines, yes. joining the many different ethnic groups oh, yes, here. Yes, huh? yes, How many yes. ethnic groups? Well, our last count was 35. And... Uh, we speak 50 languages. I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so really, again, when it comes to languages, I think there are too many to learn. Wow. Is, uh, so we have uh, jungle, mountain, rainforest? Rainforest. And I think I must say in, in humility that the oldest rainforest in the world is in Sabah. Mm. 130 million years. 130 million years. Amazon is only 70 million years. Whoa. Oh, is that true? Yep. Is that true? Yes. So ecotourism is huge. Yes. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we are conserving. Because we believe that the future of Sabah lies in tourism. Mm -hmm. And the way forward is really is to make sure that what nature has given us should be maintained. Because that really is the uh, main attraction to tourism in Sabah. Thank you, Minister. My pleasure. Thank you so much.
special thanks to the staff of the Shangri-La Hotel in Kuala Lumpur. For information about This Is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S. China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. Tourism, Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services.